in a very interesting time. Very interesting energy that play. Um, Mars takes about two years to go through all the signs. And it goes retrograde about once every year or once every two years. I'm not quite sure. It's once, it's once in a while, basically. And um, it's basically scheduled to go retrograde in the current Martian energy. We've been in Mars and Libra for about two weeks, I want to say. And um, instead of, uh, you know, it taking like two months or so max, basically, for Mars to transit sign, Mars is going to be in there for seven months total. We're, we're about, I think, three weeks to a month in already. And again, it's going retrograde, too. So we're experiencing all over the world, every single being, you know, uh, we will be experiencing a internalization of this energy. I want to say, uh, I'll clarify the dates later. This is only one in a couple of videos I'll be doing about this transit as time goes on to monitor how the transits are interacting, the different, you know, uh, solar and lunar, uh, lunar, lunar cycles and uh, how they're affecting it. Um, but I want to say the retrograde occurs from about March to, ooh, I really don't know, March to, to June, I think, May, something like that. Again, I'll clarify that later. I'll do a video specifically for the retrograde. This is a very fascinating energy. Uh, the fact that Mars is occupying one sign for so long, let alone it's, it's uh, Mars and Libra, it's a very challenging energy. It, it truly is. Uh, and already I've, I've seen it uh, all around me and with all the stress of, you know, the holiday season of people being very unsatisfied, dissatisfied with how things are, are going in the world. And um, that's actually a beautiful thing. It truly is because with dissatisfaction comes motivation. If everything was easy and, you know, beers and candy yeah i can't remember where that's from but if everything was easy we wouldn't accomplish anything we wouldn't have the the motivation the need to to grow to accomplish new things and i find it extremely encouraging um, if extremely challenging as well in fact i think those two things go hand in hand that mars and libra is directly opposite uh uranus and, and aries during this time I don't know if it's if it's in play right now, um, but I know it will be definitely during this transit. And at the end of the day, Mars is in Libra, Uranus is in Aries. Even if the degree isn't quite opposite, those energies are still at play, and they're very different psychological energies, different predispositions. So, in view of that opposition, let's look at what else is in play. We also have Jupiter in Cancer during this time. Jupiter's in Cancer till about July, and I've done a video about that. If you're interested in that, go ahead and check that out. And uh, Pluto's in Capricorn. And I've also done a video about that square of Uranus and Aries and Pluto and Capricorn. For those who don't quite uh, know about astrological terminology, squares are energies that are very similar, but they take us in different directions. They are literally, from the view of the Earth, um, 90 degrees apart. So one, one angle, one energy being affecting us, you know, from deep space and whatnot. And then another one, from a very different energy. So we're being pulled in this direction, or rather, I guess you could say, we're being influenced in this direction, but we're also being influenced in this direction. And obviously that that's very useful because you have two different perspectives that are very, very different, though complementary. It's also very challenging because they're taking you in different directions. You know, they're very different energies, like I said. And during this time with the Uranus square Pluto, um, considering their, their uh, transpersonal planets, their generational planets, their outer planets, and a huge, well, okay, not Pluto, but Uranus is a huge planet in our solar system. I think it's the, goes Jupiter uh, planet-wise. Of course, the Sun is far more massive than any of the planets, but planet-wise, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune. It might be Neptune and then Uranus, but they're, they're really close, and they're, they're really big. So, not to mention Pluto, my God. Uh, we, we see this, this square happen in the typhoon that happened in the Philippines, for example. This energy of Uranus square Pluto is truly changing humanity and truly changing our world in very deep and profound ways, very healing ways. Uh, Pluto is the planet of, of transformation, of rebirth, 
of destruction, but also new growth. And um, it's not an easy planet to deal with. It, it truly is not. It's very challenging. But it's worth it. And you clear away the old to make way for the new with this energy. Um, and Uranus is the planet of the Aquarian Age, along with Saturn. And it's playing a huge role in, in us, you know, during this time. Um, its role in, in shaping life energetically is, is huge. Huge in this time. And to have a square going on with this planet, with any planet, let alone Pluto, another transpersonal planet, is um, a very big event. And I feel precipitates us moving even more so into the Aquarian Age. We, we, we really... Uh, inevitably it's it's precipitating this because I mean we're going into this next age of being this next 2,000 odd years and um, you know a golden age at that golden age in the sense of we are progressing monumentally forward look at all the beautiful technological humanitarian um, global unity that we've been experiencing the, the revolutions for de uh, democracy for power by the people, for the people, to the people. It's um, the, the growth in art and, uh, and literature and, and just humanity in general is growing. But, and that's where the square comes in. We have all this, this forward motion. Uranus is in Aries. It's in a brand new zo cycle. The zodiacal cycle starts with Aries, ends with Pisces. And so it's in this brand new cycle. We're all moving forward with nothing stopping us except that square, Pluto and Capricorn. Our, uh, our institutions, our governments, our, uh, our formal social institutions are really fucked up. And uh, we're in the same, like I said in that video, of Pluto square Uranus, Pluto is in the same sign that happened right before the American Revolution, the French Revolution, in the, the late 1700s. We, uh, we're, we have seen the corruption, the abuses of power, and, um, and we're getting to a place where we don't need these governments anymore. It's like John Lydon said in, uh, in a recent inter interview that we really don't need gover governments anymore. We are reaching a place where we can have a peaceful um, anarchy. And that word is so feared by so many because it's so misunderstood. But a peaceful coexistence of peoples. Now, we do need, of course, societal function and, and, and order, of course. This isn't to say that there's going to be no laws or anything. No, no, no. We need to have those, those structures. But they're fundamentally changing. Pluto, again, is, is the rebirth, the, the killer to bring back to life in a better way. And so during this next decade, as Pluto's there, we are experiencing this, this rebirth. So how does this relate to Mars and Libra? This is a huge trigger for all these energies. Now, I want to say right off the bat, we need to make sure this is a peaceful trigger. And Mars is in Libra. That's a very beautiful thing. It's enabling all of us to work together harmoniously. You know, Mars is said to be uh, function very well in Scorpio and Aries, sure. But when it's in its opposite sign of Taurus, or in this case, right now, of Libra, it's it's actually really, it's a, it's a boon. It's a very beneficial thing to have the, the anger taken away, to have the, you know, right off the bat, aggression taken away and for us to be communicating more to be more diplomatic to try and resolve things with words and intellect instead of swords and blood so how do we make the best oh before we get to that bit um so during this transit you know we have four different directions we have a i believe it's called a grand cross in astrology uh we have jupiter and cancer beneficial energy very beautiful it's it's enabled uh a lot of growth and, and progress, a lot of healing, a lot of emotional and nurturing, especially around the family. In the last, ooh, when did it, when, I don't know when it went into that. Um, I think it was last summer that Jupiter went into Cancer, pretty sure, June or July. And um, so it's one direction, opposite direction, Pluto and Capricorn, yeah, Pluto and Capricorn, which we were just talking about. Uranus and Aries and, uh, and Mars and Libra. This is very interesting because Jupiter takes about a year to go from one sign to another. Uh, it'll be in Leo by July of this year, of next year. Um, and again, Pluto and Uranus are way out there, way, way, way out there. I think Pluto is like 30 times as far from the sun as the Earth is from the sun. That's just insanely far. Um, and so it's going to take a while. 
you know, in Uranus as well, it's very much far out there, so it's, it's taking a while to transit. Um, which just goes to show just how powerful that influence is, because that one, that one space, you know, that one section of deep space that's affecting us psychologically, affecting our, our entire way of life here on Earth, um, it's going to be there for a long time, for a while. Uranus takes about eight years to transit from one side to another. And um, so we have that going on. And Jupiter's, you know, Jupiter takes a little bit longer uh, than, say, Venus or Mars to transit. So we have these three planets that are already in place, that have been in place for a while. And uh, here comes Mars. And Mars is now in Libra and will be, right, until another six months from now. And it's the trigger. It's, 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 um, it's triggering that, that cross, these different needs that need to happen now. The Uranian genius, all around me I see incredible new technologies, incredible new art, incredible new growth in ideas, in, in this social experiments, Burning Man and Reno, perfect example. We have all this forward momentum and we all feel it, you know, Uranus is in Aries right now, we are all in touch with this energy. And it's all moving us forward. That square with Pluto, it's, it's holding us back. It's forcing us to get rid of that which we don't need in our society and to make a society that's more fair, more effective. Um, I see technology growth, technological growth as being huge in this time as well as uh, medicinal growth, as growth in biological technologies. Um, and I'm really encouraged that Jupiter's in Cancer too because that's just adding good energies all around. It's a very nice section of space for Jupiter to be in and to be affecting the Earth. That angle is lovely. Um, so again, here comes Mars. And it's, it's triggering all these different needs. Needs for growth, needs for purification, needs for moving forward and progressing. And uh, they're very different needs. And that's where that challenge comes from. Specifically, Mars opposite Uranus and Aries, um, a lot of random aggression is going to happen, a lot of just snapping and tem uh, tempers and whatnot, and you'll see a lot of people, well, I don't want to say a lot of people, but you'll certainly see some people um, who aren't in tune with who they are, aren't in tune with their life here on Earth, and so will devolve into animals. I saw it today in a parking lot of two men yelling at each other like, like silly evolved monkeys. Here we are. You know, in this earth form, we very much are evolved monkeys, but we are so much more than that. We are so much infinitely more than that. You know, let alone from, you know, seeing it from a soul or spiritual or esoteric level, but seeing it from the level of just intelligence, of being able to understand and comprehend and grow. That is what makes us the stewards of this planet, not the exploiters of this planet, which is another Pluto and Capricorn lesson we need to learn if we're going to be able to live here um, and continue to prosper or alone survive um, and I, I have no doubt we will but it's essential that we we do the work that's necessary we, it's truly essential um, yeah man we're gonna we're gonna be seeing a lot of people who are already feeling that that tenseness that uh, Uranus and Pluto have been square for a while now I, I think I did that video talking about it like six months ago I think something like that and I know it's going to be squaring until like a, a, maybe another year in a couple months, year and a half. So, and not to mention, actually, it might be squaring all the way until the end of Pluto and Capricorn. I'm really not sure. I got to check that out. In the next video, I'll update that. Um, but that tension's been there. And, you know, Pluto and Capricorn, it's the, it's the same stuff that we've seen throughout history. In some ways, even worse, of uh, exploitation by uh, those in the ruling and elite classes of the lower classes, of the working classes. Um, you know, the offshore accounts of huge giants like Home Depot and all the Walmart uh, who aren't paying their fair share of taxes, of um, wage slaves. You know, uh, I can't say how many friends I have uh, of all different ages who are essentially wage slaves. It's, it's a very tragic circumstance that we're in and you know it's also part of where we are as a world technologically we are on the the brink of such huge growth and um and it is important to keep tech, uh, technology in mind in all of this um, yeah that's a whole nother topic but 
we are all feeling this economic tension of how do we survive? How do we get a job? How do we, you know, make a, a comfortable living, let alone how do we survive? You know, how do we make a living in the first place? It's a, a very difficult crossroads we're, we're in. And again, I have no doubt whatsoever we're going to get through it. And that's not just me being, oh, I'm being optimistic. No, it's, I really do see us getting through it. I've always sensed we will get through it. But we need to do the work. We need to figure out how to get through it. We need to figure out how to make our system, our society more fair, um, more transparent, how to make our governments more transparent, and uh, economic practices, how, how we make those more transparent. For the last 60 odd years, pretty much since the end of World War II, the U.S. and its, uh, its multinational corporations from the United Fruit Company in Central America and South America um, to, you know, now Walmart and uh, all the other companies have been using uh, sweatshop labor. Or worse, again, with the with the, the case of the, the United Fruit Company engaging in coup d'etats with the U.S. government in Central America and South America. Uh, insanities, insanities, uh, and ridiculous abuses of power that, that have been killing and hurting the people of the world. That needs to end. That is, this is now our opportunity. That tension is there for us to figure that out, to fix it. And it's very important to take a, a world view on this. So not just have the isolationist perspective of, oh no, the U.S. needs to figure out its own problems. That's bullshit. We are all in the same world. We need to get past these ideas of national boundaries, of cultural boundaries. We are all the same culture. We are all the same nation. The world is our home. It is our village. And um, the faster that we accelerate to that, that, that stage, that mindset, that evolutionary next step, the better, and the, the better our growth will be, and the more healthy our growth will be, uh, and the faster it will be. So Mars is in Libra is triggering all this. It is getting us all to face our biggest challenges, and is getting us all to face it in a diplomatic way of us working together. There will be so many arguments with this energy, it's inevitable, but arguments, if they're actually rooted in good intentions, arguments that are, you're not just arguing to arguing, for example, you're not just fighting somebody to let off steam, you're actually, you're not even fighting somebody, but you're debating how to move forward, beautiful, that is the best way to use this energy. Um, a mistake would be to be passive aggressive with this energy, a mistake, a learning opportunity would be to be passive aggressive with this energy. Um, and by learning opportunity, I mean a step uh, uh, how to put it, a mistake in the sense that we could do so much better with the energy. You know, Mars and Libra is an incredibly harmonious, compromising energy, a positive compromising energy, that we could be doing so much better instead of just arguing and fighting just for the sake of fighting and, you know, having, verbing, having verbal battles just to, you know, because we're mad. That's not going to help us. We need to figure out ways forward and ways forward that include other people, ways forward that include everyone, again, the global village, and don't, don't just have us in mind. We need to get past this selfish no notion of us versus them. It's incredibly inaccurate. It, it makes no sense. Again, we are in the global times. Part of the age of Aquarius is us moving forward as a global consciousness, humanity uniting under one banner. It's inevitable. But we need to make it happen sooner. Because the sooner it happens and the more peacefully it happens, the better the world will be. And wars won't happen. And we can figure out how to get rid of poverty. We can figure out how to get rid of inequalities. But we all need to be on the same page first. And uh, the way to do that isn't through wars. It is not through wars. It is through democracy. Through education. Through healthcare. Through providing... A standard of living for everyone. We have a lot to figure out in this world. We truly do. And during this time, this is our opportunity to figure it out. Again, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of tension. But we need that stress. We need that tension for us to move forward. It's giving us power. It truly is. Squares are remarkably rewarding. We just have to tap into them. And we need to figure out how to use that tension in a positive way. How to be motivated by it to grow. Instead of just getting, oh, you know. I want to move forward. I want to, you know, exercise my Uranus and Aries energies. But I, our society is, is corrupt in a lot of ways. It, it could be doing so much better. So I'm just going to be apathetic. No, <laughs> no, 
No, no, no, no. Okay, I'll use that inspiration, that moving forward progressive energies to inspire positive changes, step by step, day by day, measurable changes of how to make society better. Every single person has their role. Every single person has their place, their way to make the world better in ways that nobody else can. And with Mars and Libra, we are, we are truly giving, being given a, a fantastic opportunity to move forward, to work with each other. And, um, you know, to achieve all that we've needed to achieve for so long. World peace, world education, world suffrage, um, world access to health care, and just a, a, a good standard of living. So, during this time, we'll be seeing a lot of social justice. I find it extremely encouraging that uh, gay marriage has been growing so much in the states, for example. I think it's, there's like 19 states. Yes, fantastic. Finally, we're moving forward in that way. Beautiful. We're getting past hatred and bigotry and dogma. Beautiful. That's just one way that this energy is helping us. It's just one way that it can be used. A social justice is equality. Justice in general. Um, and we'll get there. Like I said, it's inevitable we'll get there. The age of Aquarius, we, we're, I don't think we're going to blow ourselves up. I think we're past that, you know, challenge, World War II and the Cold War and whatnot. Um, but we've proven to ourselves that we can get past our more animalistic instincts and embrace a higher evolutionary being. Um, and it's very beautiful. But we need to keep going. We need to always keep going. And right now, this is a beautiful, like I said, opportunity for us to move forward. Um, I think that's all I have to say for now. But I definitely will be doing some more videos because this is a huge transit for planet Earth and all us Earthlings. And um, it's very exciting. It really is. We'll be, we'll be growing so much during this time. So let's work together and let's, let's make it the best growth possible and make it lasting growth. For not only us, but, you know, those who come after. First, we need to make sure there's a world to come after, too. But, you know, one one thing, one step at a time. So. Uh, yeah, that's everything I can think of. Namaste. And for those who, uh, who haven't been with me on my journeys, these videos for a while, infinite, infinite love to you. So that means namaste. Ah.